Last time, we created this navigation system, which is utilizing the Normesh query in dots. And today, we'll further optimize it using jobs, so that we can multi-thread the path calculations and have up to 12,000 of entities in our game. So my scene setup is still the same as in the last part, and now we'll get to the no agent system. In the onUpdate function, we are looping through all of the no mesh agents and we are deciding if they should move or if we need to calculate new path. But instead of using functions, we'll create new move job and calculate path job for that. So at using unity.jobs. So we have those two structs, they are both implementing the iJob interface and they are both burst compile. Now we can take everything that we have in the move function and just move it to the move job and do the same thing for the calculate path job. So I have just moved all of the code from these functions into the execute function of these jobs. Now we have many references missing as for the transform, the navigation agent and so on. So I will just add variables for these inside these jobs. So we have multiple public variables that we'll be able to set once we are creating the job and all of these will be just read only so we won't be able to pass data from the job to the main thread. First we have the no mesh component for the agent, then we have the transform, we also have the entity because we'll need to access the waypoint buffer from the buffer lookup table. The buffer lookup table is being used when you want to access some buffer inside a job, so then we need to just update the buffer lookup and based on the entity it will get us the waypoint buffer on the entity. We also have a float for the delta time, because in here we can't use the system API. It is actually not telling you any errors right now, but if you tried playing the game it would give you an error. We also have a reference for the entity command buffer, because once we change some data on the agent or on the transform, we want to be able to set the data back to the entity. And lastly, we have the buffer lookup, with which we will be able to access the waypoint buffer on this entity. And because none of these variables are references, we can just delete the value RO. We are also having some errors with the waypoint buffer, so we will get it from the buffer lookup table. So I just added it into the condition. If we are able to get the buffer from the waypoints buffer lookup table, I'm just saving it into a variable called waypoint buffer. And after that it is the same. And because we are changing some values in the agent, we also need to set it back to the entity because this is no longer a reference. So I'm using the entity command buffer to just set the component on the entity and the new value is the agent. And we'll need to do the same thing with the transform because we are also setting its rotation and position. So we'll just set it back to the entity using the entity command buffer. So we have jobify the move function and we'll worry about setting all of these parameters later once we have done the calculate path job. In which we are again getting many errors, so I will add variables that we need in order for this job to work. We have a variable for the entity as well as for the entity command buffer so that later we can set some data back to the entity. We also need to know the agent as well as the query and I'm directly inputting the from position so that we no longer need to get it from the transform. So we can just delete this line. And instead of accessing the to position from the entity, I will just go to the no agent component and I will set it directly as a float free. So instead of a target entity, we now have a target position. And this will just make it that we can access the position easier than having to access it from the entity. So in the calculate path job, as we are getting the to position, we can just do agent.target position. As we scroll down, we can see that there are no errors in here, we just have some errors with the waypoint buffer. So instead of referencing the waypoint buffer into a variable, I will just do it using the entity command buffer. So to clear the waypoint buffer, we can use ecb.setBuffer. And to add some data to the waypoint buffer, instead of directly referencing the waypoint buffer, we can use ecb.append to buffer. And as we are setting some data in the agent, we no longer need to specify if it is value rv or ro, we can just remove that. But after we set the data, we again need to use the entity command buffer to set it to the entity. Just like that. So now even the calculate path job is giving us no errors. 
but what is still not going to work is the query. Because in here, when we are creating the query, we are accessing the nomesh world, which doesn't work in jobs. And also creating new nomesh query every frame would be really bad for performance. So we can just delete the query from here. And we also don't need to dispose it. We'll just keep the queries in a list and we'll dispose them once we quit the game. Now we can try going to Unity and see if we get no errors. It is just telling us that we can't access the function calculate path and move. So I will just delete those for now. And on the line 62 and 64, we are getting some errors with the time, which is because I forgot to set it. So instead of using the system API that time that delta time, we can just use the delta time that we have set a variable to, which we have here. And in the no agent authoring script, we also are getting some error because we have renamed the variable from the target transform to target position. So instead of accessing a transform, we need to get a vector free and it will be our target position. And as we are just setting a float free, we no longer need to get the entity. So we can just keep the authoring script like this. And now in Unity we are getting no errors. Sweet. So we can get back to the no agent system. We can delete all of the stuff that we have in the void on update, because this time we will be getting the query in start and then we will be getting all of the entities from it. We can create the query like this, so I'm doing all of this in the onCreate function. We have a variable for the entity query and I'm saving it using the allocator.persistent so that we can set it just on start of the game and we want to make sure that all of the entities in the query have the no agent component as well as the local transform. In the onCreate function we can also get the no mesh word and we can get the buffer lookup table that I was talking about because we'll need to get the waypoint buffer inside the move job. So I'm getting the no mesh world, saving it into a variable and I'm also getting the waypoint buffer lookup that we can get from the state and I'm saying that it should be only read only. After we have all of this necessary information, we'll also need to store a native array of all of the entities, of all of the entity command buffers that we'll need to use on each of them and we'll also need a list of all of the no mesh queries. So we have native array for the entities, entity command buffers and list for the no mesh queries which I'm creating in the onCreate function and in the onDestroy function we'll also need to dispose the no mesh queries. So when we start the game we allocate new list containing the no mesh queries with the persistent allocator and when we turn off the game we'll dispose the list as well as all of the no mesh queries in it. After that, in the onUpdate function, we'll need to populate the array of the entities as well as of the entity command buffers. So I'm creating the entity array just with the temp job allocator and then I'm creating also the entity command buffer array. And I'm getting all of the entities from the entity query using that to entity array function. After we have created the array of all of the entity command buffers, we need to create them, so that's why I have the for loop here. And we also need to update the waypoint buffer lookup. Because we want to be able to complete all of the jobs at the same time, I will create array of job handles. And from the entity query, we also need to access all of the data about the no mesh agents as well as about the transforms. So we are getting all of the no mesh components from the entity query the same way that we can get entities from it. We just say that we want to transfer the entity query to component data array of the type no agent component. Because we have allocated quite a lot of native arrays and entity command buffers, I will just dispose them now. So I'm going through all of the entity command buffers, I'm calling the playback on them so that it does everything that is recorded in the command buffer. After that we can just dispose them and I'm disposing the native array of the agents, transforms, handles, entities as well as the entity command buffer array itself. So now we shouldn't have any memory leaks. Now we'll need to loop through all of the entities and check if we want to call the move job or the calculate path job on them. The logic that we have now is the same as we had before. We are looping through all of the entities. I'm checking if the next path calculate time of the agent is less than the elapsed time. In this case we can just calculate the path. Otherwise if the path was already calculated we can just call the move job. 
So when we want to call the calculate path job, we just need to create it and set all of the variables that we have defined. I'm taking all of these from the native arrays and lists that we have created. And we just need to add it to the handles list and actually schedule the job. With the move job, it is the same, just set all of the variables, schedule it, and after we have scheduled all of the jobs, we can complete them all at once. There is still one thing missing, and that is the no mesh query, because we haven't created any of them yet. But we don't want to be creating new no mesh queries each frame, that would be too expensive. So instead, on each of the no agent components, I will store a boolean if we have created no mesh query for this one, and if the query of this agent was not set yet, we will create a new one and add it to the persistent list, and if it already was created, we can just reuse it. So if the query of the agent was not set yet, then we need to create new no mesh agent that will just copy all of the information from the agent at the correct index. We'll create the query and just add it to the list, so we are using the no mesh word for that, and again we are using the allocator.persistent. Then we can say that the query on the new agent was set, and we just need to assign the agent back to the list. And with all of this, we should now have a working pathfinding solution utilizing no mesh query with jobs. The way that I created this system is definitely not the most effective, I'm sure that you can squeeze out a lot more performance out of this, but even with my approach, I'm able to spawn about 12,000 of entities and still run the game at 60 frames per second, which I think that is pretty good result. But this is still my experimenting with dots, so if you find a better way on how to use no mesh queries and get even more performance, let me know down in the comments. And one last thing that we need to change about the calculate path job is that we need to set that the path was not calculated yet and we also need to set the next path calculate time on the no agent. And we also need to set the component back to the entity, so again we are using the entity command buffer. And because sometimes the agent may stop moving just before the endpoint, we also want to change this condition, so if the status is either in progress or it was succeeded, we can continue. So the code should look like this. And when I start the game, we can set all of the agents start moving to the point as where they should go, which is set in the no agent component and currently it is on 0, 0. We can see that here, so I can try changing it and they should change the position where they are going. So what is the reason that we needed to add this much code to our no mesh query system to make the agents work? Well, if we take a look into the profiler and we go to the worker threads, we can see that the jobs are being spread across all of the cores. So here we have one move job, then on the other core we have another move job, and so on. Right now, as we have just few agents in the scene, we are not going to notice any big performance impact, but once we have thousands of them, you will definitely see a performance improvement. I tried spawning many agents using the built-in Unity agent system, which is not using ECS, I was able to spawn about 3 to 4 thousands of entities and still run the game on 60 frames per second, which definitely is a decent result. But with the custom approach using no mesh query and the data oriented technology stack of recording, I was able to get about 12 thousands of entities spawned into the game and still get 60 frames per second. So that's about 3 times better result, which is a great improvement. This is still probably not the best pathfinding solution that you will be able to make, so if you have a better idea how to make the no mesh query with dots work even better, let me know down in the comments. I hope that this video was useful, if you have any questions also drop them down to the comments, don't forget to like, subscribe and I will see you in next videos. Bye! Thanks for watching this video till the end. If you are looking for a Unity, C Sharp or Bolt tutor, then I am here for you, so feel free to send me a message to my gmail and take a look at my website for more info. I can help you with your personal projects or teach you anything about game development you would want to know. You are welcome.